Oh, well, it's good to be back. It has been a minute since I looked in front of one of these guys. Today I decided that 2018 is officially going to be a bangers only type of year. I'm only gonna drop bangers, only sick videos, only amazing videos. The dopest, the crispest B-roll, nonetheless, and I'm, and I'm starting with this video right now. Today I've got some pretty exciting news. I don't think you guys are ready for what I'm about to share. I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, that's the rigged runner behind me and in the back is something attached to it. No, it's not a U-Haul trailer. It's it's not a trailer for, for my side-by-side. -side. I'm not pulling anything like that. I'm actually pulling something far greater and way cooler. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. But first, I gotta, I gotta get this camera off the tripod. One second here, let me just, uh, hold on. All right, much better. Now we can be a little hands-free. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, I hate to say this, but I've been keeping a ginormous secret from you guys. Something I probably should have told you about a week and a half ago, but I didn't because I, I suck. I'm sorry. So, uh, today's the day I announced this exciting news. Check it out. Ready? Slow pan, slow pan. Mm, boom! <laughs> Look at that. I'm officially now a boat owner. Can you believe this? 18 years of fishing and it has taken me this long to finally get a boat and I am so proud and happy of it. Oh my god, you guys. You have no idea how stoked I am. Um, believe it or not, I've actually taken this boat out a few times. Yes, I know, what an idiot I should have filmed when I took it out, but really they were for Guggen videos and they weren't on my channel, so I wanted to keep it separate. So today's video is gonna be based around this puppy right here. I'm gonna go over the good, the bad, and the ugly, why I love it and also why I hate it, and the main reason as to why I got a boat just like this one, because as you may be able to tell, it's not your traditional bass boat. Yes, I am a bass angler. That makes sense to get a bass boat, but it's not a bass boat, and I wanna explain. Okay, so let's begin with why. I got this boat. So about two and a half weeks ago, right after arriving from Chicago to DFW, I went on Craigslist and did some boat searching. I just like had this epitome. I was like, why the hell do I not have a boat yet? Why do I keep bumming rides off of Rob's boat and Perrick's boat? Everyone else's rig. Like, I just need to get my own. Like, I'm 22 years old. Like, come on, John, figure it out. Anyway, long story short, I wanted a aluminum boat that was fairly used, but not too used, and that had a V-Haul. Not a deep V-Haul, but a V-Haul. And I'll explain later as to why I wanted a V-Haul, but just hear me out. This boat was located in Mansfield. Of course, it was on Craigslist, so I was fairly sketched out. You know, I don't really buy much on Craigslist, and it can be kind of a, a weird place to purchase things. It's like a step above the black market, in my opinion. Anyway, I'm going on a tangent. So I found the boat, contacted the guy that day, and literally met up with him a few short hours later. And I was like, well, let's, let's see. So I drove all the way down to Mansfield to meet this guy, who is the owner of this 2008 16 and a half foot, 16 foot, well, I don't even know. 16 foot, let's just call it 16 foot, 16 foot aluminum low. I picked it up that day, literally contacted the guy, you know, met him and purchased it that day. So here we are now. So now that you know the story as to how I got this boat, let's talk about why I got this boat, what I like about it, and what I absolutely hate about this thing. Let's start from the top and work our way to the butt end of this, uh, this low, or as I like to call it, the slow. All right, let's mosey our way on back here. Uh, to begin with, the one thing I like about this boat a ton is the fact that there are steps on the wheel well of the trailer. I like that a ton. So like I said, I'm gonna start at the front and show you guys all the details um, and what I think is cool and kind of sucky about this rig. Let's start off with the trolling motor. The trolling motor is a motor guide wireless, which means this thing is completely controlled wirelessly. So I can be in the back of the boat and move the trolling motor side to side and forward. Um, here, I'll show you what I mean. Here's the foot pedal of the Motor Guide wireless trolling motor. Now, check this out. Watch this. I can literally be all the way over here and turn my trolling motor on. Ouch. I wasn't really hot on this motor to begin with, but I will say, it has grown on me, and I like the fact that it's wireless. Yeah, looks cool. One somewhat crusty part about this area of the boat is the limited amount of storage. There isn't much. Right here, you've got your bait live well, which is, it's probably never gonna be used. This is pretty much the epitome of crust. Let's close that. And then you've got the live well, which I can't really open because um, this is broken. So basically what I need to do is grab a knife, stick the knife right in between the seam of the boat deck and the live well lid, and just so effortlessly open it up. Um, don't know why that's in there. Oh, also, it did not come with a plug, so that's dandy. It's a pretty giant live well. Like, you can fit some pretty big fish in there. This is like a deep V boat, so I'm assuming Low was trying to market towards like a walleye crowd. It's good though because I'm, I mean, I'm usually only catching giant fish, so it's perfect that the live well can accommodate the angler, if you know what I mean. Anyway, that was an awful joke. And then the other compartment is right up here. 
and there's not much storage and it's kind of janky too because you, you've got like this slanted slope and there really isn't much room beyond that. It's not superb, it's not the best, but it's functional and that's what I wanted. When I got this boat, I was expecting a Honda Pilot, not a Maserati Ghibli. That's not my expectations here, so I'm not getting too picky, but I will say a little bit more storage would be nice. But the cool thing about the storage in the front is that you've got this little section right here. And I really like this because if it's like raining and I don't want my camera gear to get messed up, I can really quickly just slide that up in here without like stuffing it in here and having water accumulate and get all messy. Um, that I like a ton. And that's something you really won't ever see in a bass boat, that little kind of lid at the nose. That's pretty cool. Oh, check this out too. This right here is an aftermarket installation I did. Um, this is my hydrowave. I will admit it's not like the traditional hydrowave. It's a little bit more custom yeah this is the the bait fish series it, it's really sick i've used it a few times i will say it gets the fish pretty uh fired up and sassy it emits a noise in the water and actually triggers a feeding frenzy so for example check this out i'm gonna press the c button for crawfish and it'll make a crawfish feeding noise how's it going flare fishing fam and then you press the ac button which is active crawfish and that makes a noise in which uh, multiple crawfish are feeding Wait, where do you where the f you want me to fish, bro? Okay, it's, it's it's pretty unique high tech I know a lot of you guys probably won't be able to wrap your heads around it Yeah, I decided to get one for my boat just seeing that I struggle to catch fish sometimes and having a little bit of zest on the day is always great So that's why I got that thing. Anyway, let's move on front of the boat. We've discussed it now. Let's move over here This is this is pretty cool. Um, one reason why I got this boat is because of this You're looking at it right now this beautiful little well right in the middle of the boat. Do you guys realize how clutch this is? The reason why I like this so much and why I got the DV is because of this. I feel like I can put a lot of camera gear in here. There's a lot of space and it really makes up for the lack of space up front, which I hate. But this is great, you know, like I can take these two seats out right here and have so much room for camera gear, food, snacks, brats, throw a grill in here. Have a party on this boat. It's basically a party bass boat for the most part. Um, that's one huge thing that really caught my attention when checking this boat out. Now let's move to the center console. Let's open up the low seats. I will say these seats are extremely comfortable. I mean, look at that. That is just, that is plush. This is where the magic happens right here, folks. This is where the driving is done, in case you were curious. This is a driving wheel, or, or more commonly known as a steering wheel, because it steers the motor. Check this out. I'm steering the motor a little bit there. So while we're on the topic of the steering wheel, I custom fitted a plush leather rim around my steering wheel, it's, it's really comfy. It's also heated, so when I'm ripping down like Sturgeon Bay or uh, up in some of those northern Wisconsin lakes and it's really chilly out, my hands aren't cold. I've customly added some diamond bedazzled accents to the, um, the leather stitching. It's, I mean, it's, it's top notch. Not much I can say about this other than the fact that it is luxury. You've got battery voltage here, trim. I don't think any of these work. Then again, when does any of these ever work after the first year of owning a boat? This gauge is definitely off. This one says I run 7,000 RPM at like 30 miles per hour. I actually can realistically get this thing up to 35. Um, I think at about 5,500 RPM. Not like that sh even matters, but some of you guys are curious, so I thought I'd mention it. Um, I'm still really breaking this boat in. It's... <laughs> For myself it's probably been broken up it's 2008 now on to electronics we are not only rocking the 141c hummingbird fish finder we've also got the hds 19 and a half i can't tell you guys how many times i've been on the water and i've been searching for that little hump that nugget on the dime which is on the hump which is also on another hump this thing is so key there's not much to talk about the uh the hds 19 and a half of the fact that you know it's just like all the other units it's just bigger and it makes my boat look a lot cooler when i put it on the front and it lets everyone know that i spend a lot of money on my stuff the real reason as to why i got this is because this thing right here i can control this thing remotely just like my trolling motor just take a look at this pretty sick huh that's what i got in the front um, in case you're wondering, yes, I did buy a flat screen TV just for this little skit video intro to my boat. If I actually had a fish finder this big, it would be bigger than my boat itself. Um, no, the only fish finder I have in this boat is this thing right here. It's gonna have to go. I might put like, really, I don't know much about fish finders or boats, even for that matter. Literally right before I was filming this video, this happened. Yeah, I'm probably gonna put like a 10 inch display on here at the very most. I don't need to go absolutely crazy. Just something I can map with and find fish with. Uh, but this is this is temporary, as is probably the motor. I'm, I'm probably gonna get a Minn Kota for the front. Yeah, this is sweet. No foot pedal, of course. It's got the 
got the doohickey here. I don't know what this is called, but it's got the le the lever, the lever back here, and uh, that's about all there is to that. Right down here is where I store my rods when I'm traveling, when I'm out fishing. I store them right here, um, and there's actually a compartment in this side section where I store all of my tackle trays. Uh, this is where I keep my crankbaits, my jigs, hard baits, plastics, things of that nature. Yeah, I, I need to organize this boat, as you may be able to tell. Yeah, then you got the, the seats. Great seats, A1. Lowe wants to make sure that you know what kind of boat you bought, so they put Lowe on just about everything in this rig. Okay, moving on to the back of the rig, which is right here. This is the booty end. This is, oh, did I just say that really? This is possibly the crustiest thing on a boat you'll ever see. Just prepare yourself. Bang. Uh, yeah, so when I bought this boat, I bought it with no working hinges in the rear battery compartment. Dickie decided to just take a screw and screw in a little homemade uh, wire system here so it's it's not even a temporary fix it's just kind of like a uh, maybe this will work kind of deal and guess what it didn't work this side already ripped off and this side is soon to rip off as well i'm not really concerned about how it looks or what people think of it i'm just worried that this thing is going to go flying off the highway i will say this thing does like to jiggle and bounce around at any speed over 60 miles per hour and i like to kind of cruise at a crisp 68 maybe 72 miles per hour when I'm trying to get to my spot god forbid this thing ever flies back and hits my motor or even worse a car behind me I got to fix that that's like the first priority second is trolling motor then third is um, the the actual HDS 19 and a half so in the crust cave we've got two batteries right here and then it's also got a onboard charger which is actually very clutch this wiring has to be completely redone though this thing is super loose um actually look at that it just came off yeah good stuff real good stuff that connects to my trolling motor i can't have that loosely just hanging around also looks like dicky used a whole roll of electrical tape on just this wire right here, that needs to be completely redone, like so badly. Other than that, the back of the boat's fine, the batteries work great, and uh, I've got no complaints, just other than the fact that this is, this is going to kill someone if I don't fix it soon. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I don't really know what's in this compartment, believe it or not, I didn't really check much what was in this boat when I bought it, just made sure everything worked. Okay, um, so this boat came equipped with three anchors, uh, one of which looks like it was used on set for Pirates of the Caribbean. This thing is meaty as all hell, you got that anchor. Um, I just learned that there's also a, a third anchor that looks like that one back here. And then you got the anchor that's pulled straight off my Sun Dolphin Pro 120 that's back in Ohio. So you got a variety, you got, you got a lot of options as far as anchors go. <laughs> and then along with that we've got... Uh, what the hell is this? Oh god, it's moist. We got a baggie of just some some cloths maybe that were used for a, a murder. I don't know, cleaning up a crime scene. This is an eyesore. We're just gonna shut that real quick. Moving on to this section right here. This section hopefully is gonna be a little bit cooler. Oh, and you guessed it. It's really not that cool. And here we got another bait bucket. Looks like whoever owned this boat beforehand was heavy on the shiners. You got a hook removal tool, which is meant for like pike or musky. Does have a first aid kit, which looks like it's also been crusted to bits. I'm gonna pretty much take all this out and turn it into tackle compartments. Like I said, I just haven't had a whole lot of time to deal with this boat. All right, let's hop down, talk about the rear of the boat. Um, here's something kind of cool. This is an after purchase installation. Check out those puppies back there. Two words, power poles, two of them. Yeah, so these were installed by myself too. Very easy installation, takes about like five to 10 seconds. These are great peepholes, highly recommend them. Resting in between the peepholes, we've got a gorgeous American bred 60 horsepower Mercury. This puppy hums. This motor's actually great. I'll open up the cowling in case you want to see. Why the hell do you guys care about this kind of stuff? I never really know, but I'll show you anyway. Hold on one sec. Look at that. Look at all those cylinders. She actually is, I will admit, very clean. Um, whoever had this boat either took really good care of it or only used the trolling motor. I don't know, maybe all boat motors are supposed to look like this and I'm naive, but this just looks very, very well, very well maintained. I don't know, maybe it's just my ignorance of boats and such, but it's, um, it looks great. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually just gonna leave that off. I don't think it's necessary to keep it on all the time. So that is all I have for you guys 
today. It is up to you now. The ball is in your hands. I need a name for this boat. I don't really like the way that low sticker looks. It's probably going to have to come off at some point in time, and I want to replace it with the official name of this rig. And I need you guys to do just that in the comment section below. Let me know what you think the new name of the boat is. I don't want you guys to think I'm not going to fish off the kayak anymore. I actually have some kayak update videos coming very shortly. I'm going to be fishing off the thing a ton. This is just something for me to fish off of bigger waters with. And with that being said, I'm also going to be introducing a series in the near future where I turn my rig runner in the most badass, insane fishing, touring, off-road vehicle in the entire universe. That's right, I said it, the entire universe. I'm pretty stoked about this. So while I won't be doing too much customization on the slow, I will be doing some very cool things in the near future with this. So stay tuned for that. Um, more kayak update videos coming very soon. Thank you for the view. I appreciate it. I hope all is well. Stay safe, anglers. Be good. And as always, keep fishing. Never stop. Thank you.